it's connected to Twitch, so that's a good start. Has it started? Ads playing? Mm, not yet. Oh, wait. No, it says offline. Check out this art stream from 26 seconds ago. What? It hasn't stopped streaming at my end. There was a network error. Oh, there it goes. It's um, playing 40 seconds of your last. <laughs> fucking Twitch. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm glad that was a, a description and not an instruction. Uh, anyway, mm. it's running back to back ads and I think it's going to play. So, nice. yeah. Oh, Even like... though it says the channel's offline. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I started early this morning because I knew I was going to have problems because it's been two weeks and I've moved this laptop around and cameras and etc etc well it says it's live even though it says the channel's offline so I don't know what's going on it's bizarre. wave to the camera <laughs> you'll, you'll get that in 20 seconds I suppose yep I saw it so and yeah. then you put your hands back in your thing. Yeah. So here we are. Morning, Maddie. Good morning, Dan. How are you? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm doing okay too. Well, that's okay. Mutual liars, situ no, mutual liars society. <laughs> I was just going to say that at least okay is getting some action. Yeah. Early for jokes like that. <laughs> oh, it's blue o'clock somewhere. <laughs> East Coast America, I think. Yeah, maybe. Oh, Joe's um, set herself up for some interesting an interesting hour or so she's just taking both dogs for a walk well that's good well, good she, for the dogs she's now attempting to get Willow to sit on the curb <laughs> oh boy let's just say that doesn't usually go terribly well and a car's just oh, I heard, fast and I heard the barking yeah though. did that yeah she <laughs> hates cars I don't know what it is, and I don't know when it started. Well, it was probably only a couple of months ago. Um, if she's at the curb and a car goes past, she launches at it. So, I'm not sure where that's come from. I'm hearing your birds going in your garden, too. Uh, different headphones, so the microphone is obviously not as... Significantly... Electric. No, it's significantly more sensitive. Because yeah. I'm getting background noise off your CPU fan as well, I guess, or yeah. something. I might have to change headphones that might not be... Yeah, I think that would probably be a good idea. Mm. Alright. Hey, what's this? Twitch is embedding ads in your stream now, <laughs> instead of just running them over the top oh, the kids
All right. You can hear me? How about now? Well, well, oh, I just turned on the streams audio for a while, and yeah, it's right. better. Okay, good. I'll use the expensive ones. <laughs> uh, technical difficulties. Well, that's what you get for having time off. Yeah. Time off for bad behavior. Yes, you've been a very naughty boy. You are not the Messiah. <laughs> Ah, where were we? I don't remember. It's uh, been so long ago. Uh, I don't you know. know what uh, thing you were painting on the stream were some goblin skirmishes. Right. Well, they're done. Obviously. Um. And then you had some dark elf spearmen. Yeah. Why don't you show them off for our viewers? The one <laughs> bonus about having switched headphones is, is, of course, these are wireless. Oh, not moving very well this morning. I admit that my right ankle is really painful and I'm about to rub some uh, Elmore oil on it. Wow. So there are the uh, goblin skirmishes. Finally ordered myself some additional shelves for my display cabinets. They'll be here in a week or so. But I've come to the sudden realisation that I'm now going to have to unload the entire cabinet to install those new shelves. Well, yeah. It's a couple of thousand miniatures in there. <laughs> oh dear, uh, oh dear. The weight of it would be pretty, pretty good. The weight of... The miniatures. Oh, uh, most of it's plastic. Yeah, but even plastic weighs something. Yeah, I look, I'm, I'm looking at the, the weight of the cabinet, that the cabinet's going to end up just from the additional glass going in. Because those glass shelves aren't all that light. No, and I'm putting not. an additional five shelves in each of the cabinets, so that's yeah. quite a lot. It is. It is. It'll mean that each cabinet has one, two, three. Each cabinet will have eleven shelves. Wow. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah, I, it's probably overkill. But, like, each cabinet's got two, three, four, five, six shelves in it now, and I've run out of room. So, nearly doubling the capacity will give me 
possibly enough room for the miniatures I've got here now that aren't assembled and aren't painted, etc, etc. Possibly. I don't know. Given my spending spree yesterday, that may not be true any longer. Ah, <laughs> uh, best laid plans. Yes. But, um... I went through the glazier that we've been using to repair windows, because since we've been in here, we've busted three windows. When I say we, I just mean the household in general. Um, mm, I got that. Well, actually, it's four windows, and we got a cat door put in one. We had one replaced because it had been scratched by the previous owner's dog to the point where it was opaque. Um, That's pretty impressive. Yeah. That that must have entertained the neighbours no end listening to that. Then I fell through a window failing a dismount check off my bicycle. Um, which I is remember a, you telling me about that. A very funny story. Um and then Willow was running around the house with a deer antler in it and she crashed into one of the windows in the family room and basically went straight through it because it was still the original glass, which was, what did he say it was? I think it was three millimetres untoughened. So it was a, an accident waiting to happen. Um, but So that window's now got the five mil toughened in it by law, so... Um, and he's he's always been really good. He's always turned up promptly and done a really good job and been neat and been clean and cleaned up after himself and all that kind of stuff. And he's a, a youngish sort of a guy and he's got his own business or at least his own um, franchise holding of whatever it is. I'm not sure whether it's a bigger business or whether it's just his or not. Anyhow, I just decided that I'd call him up because these are IKEA cabinets. And I can't get replacement shelves for them. They just don't sell them for this particular cabinet. They sell them for others, but they're all different sizes, and so the shelves don't work. So I was like, oh, well, I'll get some custom shelves made. And my fear was is that these shelves were going to be 100 bucks each. But they're not. So. They're 200 Um, If I... If I do a little bit of maths foo with my very expensive calculator here. The one sitting between your shoulders. No, that one doesn't work. Ah, yeah. uh, they're about 60, 63, 63 bucks each, I think. That's pretty good. That's not too bad. So, yeah, I ordered 15 of those. And I'll have to wobble down to Bunnings and pick up some shelf supports, some clear ones, because I can't get the ones that are in it from IKEA because IKEA. Um, so they'll just have to be the generic clear crystal ones. But it'll be fine. They'll be unobtrusive. You won't really be able to see them. The one downside is, is that I put the lighting kits into the cabinet. So the lighting kits are in... There's three cells if you like in each one of the cabinets because there's wooden dividers between them to lend the cabinet some lateral strength yeah so each one of the cells has a light bar installed in the top of it at, um, with the additional two shelves going into most of these cells the miniatures on the bottom shelf are probably not going to get very much light when the lights are turned on Depends on how heavy I stack the shelves and how big the bases are and how much light gets blocked going through, I suppose. But can't have everything. Well, you know what the solution to that is, don't you? Mm. Store more lighting in the bottom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that wasn't cheap, as I recall. What in life worth doing is? <laughs> Nothing. So, these are the goblin skirmishes. I mean, they, they it really is just a packet of goblin archers, which is based for skirmishing rather than in line. So, 
There's nothing yeah, terribly I guess, exciting about those. Well, aside from the fact that they're goblins, and the goblins in Demon World Range are actually pretty cool. They're very good. Very awesome. And then we have these guys, who are... They have segmented armor panels, and the leader is very sort of samurai-ish. Um, yeah... Yeah, I saw that in the average Dark Elf in the Demon World range, and I thought, mm. these guys were clearly inspired by something very Eastern. Mm. So, we, we're we doing cool. purple, and br purple and copper as the primary two colours for these guys. Um, with a weapon bronze for the weapons, because I thought that the steel would clash. I think you're right. So, we'll continue I've bought that thing. two or three different pots of bronze to do different things. Mm. I always want to do bronze weapons. I never do it. Yeah. I always chicken out. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I think it's worked out well. It's It's... it's copper highlighted with gold and we'll see that through the process this morning maybe if I get that yeah. far so um, the other thing that was interesting about these was this, I went to a different base texture and normally when I do a base texture um, I'll do the texture paint itself and then do a wash over it these mm. don't have a wash so this is just the base texture which I think is is excellent it's got enough variation in it to be interesting. Um, and that's this stuff. Armageddon dust. Hmm. As opposed to Armageddon tired, because I'm not getting tired, I'm already tired. Um, that with the, the 6 mil mixed yellow tufts i think has given it a sort of a a bit of an arid look i quite agree which is different than the arid look of the red from the goblins so yeah or well, one screams northern africa or something similar and another one screams outback australia <laughs> yeah or southern africa <laughs> yeah, yeah southern africa no. So they're good. There was another conversation that was happening in the Demon World channels this week about eyes. I imagine you caught yeah, that. I did. So there I was did. a little bit of advice given about trying some brush pens for eyes. So we're going to do that too, seeing as Amazon managed to get me these in time. So I've already, I've already had a quick look, at the, and the brush tip on these is pretty fantastic, actually. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but that is a heckin' fine point. Yeah. That is a very fine point. And, of course, me being me, I just went, oh, how many colours are available? Good, I'll have all of those. So we'll see. Never say you'll never do pink eyes. <laughs> yeah, pink eye. All right. Um, probably waffled on enough. Well, just out of curiosity, what's the set of those pens run? Thirty bucks. Well, that's uh, two pots of Citadel something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, figure that That's out. A couple of dollars each. So, if they're absolute rubbish, and I, I, I really actually don't think they are going to be, then um, no harm, no foul. But So, we start with a blob of alien purple. A 
So, my purchase for the week was uh, Army Painter Speed Paint set. Right. The beginner set? Yeah, the yeah, one yeah. with four in it. Yep. Have you tried them yet? Well, no, seeing as how, you know, I placed the order last night and... <laughs> ah. <laughs> right. No, I haven't tried them yet. <laughs> so you didn't wobble down to your local friendly gaming store and... No, because I don't really have a friendly local gaming store. The local one is not friendly? Well, I don't really have a local one either. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think my uh, local gaming store would carry it anyway. I haven't looked, but they're uh, heavily in bed with GW, so... Uh, Well, this is a good thing. I'm I'm very pleased uh, and looking forward to you getting a hold of those because I want to know what you think of them. Um, I've done the same, but I went for the pre-order for the full set, um, which is released today. How many in that one? Doof. Uh, I don't know. Uh, a bit more than twice, I think, what's in the basic one. Maybe a little bit more. Mm. Fun. Yeah. Um, what? Yeah. <laughs> Some of the things that I got this week was some more paint racks. Yeah, I suppose you'd need them. Uh, Well, it's again, it's another one of those silly things, but I, when I picked up the model bug again, the, 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 plastic display model thing as opposed to the wargaming model thing um i i went back to a known quantity from my childhood which was spending hours and hours assembling tamiya stuff and having all the tamiya paints and when i started wargaming i was painting wargaming figures with tamiya paints um and some people still do that and that's okay um I find that I don't like mixing the alcohol acrylics, alcohol-based acrylics with the water-based acrylics. It's just, it's a thing, and it's a me thing, and I'm not suggesting you can't do it, but I don't. So, anyhow, moving on. Um, So, I bought a few model kits over the last few months. He says, looking at the tall stack of model kits with despair um and so i bought a a fairly comprehensive range of tamiya paints in the colors that the kits call out um so now i have a a shelf that's covered in tamiya paint pots and it's annoying me because i can't use the shelf for other things so i've got some racks for the that fit the Tamiya paint pots. Well, you got to do what you got to do. Well, and it's probably a bit better than just leaving them in a box, like I do. Well, it it's a case of I want to use them, and I don't want to be scrabbling around. What's annoying me at the moment is is they're all on a shelf. And the only thing I can see is the tops of them. Now, for example, what turned up in a back order, because I ordered these a fair while ago, 
and some of them weren't available and a, a back order arrived. And case in point, I don't know if you can see that. Yes, four very similar jar plastic tops. Hmm. This one's sky Except gray. One, two, three, four. <laughs> this one's sky gray. This one's royal light gray. This one's medium sea gray. And this one is dark sea gray. Now, the dark sea gray does stand out a little bit when you stick it next to its neighbors. But if it's mm -hmm. sitting over here uh, and there are other colors in between, you can't tell the difference. And you've got to pick them up and you've got to read the labels. And it's like... Yeah. I understand this is a first world problem, but it's a problem. May I offer a uh, third world solution? <laughs> yes. Write the code and the name on the top on of the jar. On the lid. You are a genius. <laughs> <laughs> I have the same problem with my damned um, uh, Vallejos. Right. Because they're all sitting in a box. Yeah. And the only thing that sticks over the top of the box is like a tiny little fraction of the bottle. And the grey caps. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. So I got to pick up just about each and every one. So one day I decided, you know what? I'm just going to reorganize these so that they are in product code order. Uh, and then I decided that wasn't right because they've added colors on at the end that really should be earlier on. Mm -hmm. Some of the flesh colours are in the 60s when they should be in the 1s and 2s. Yeah. Anyway, so, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have the same problem, so that's what I'm doing. I'm yeah, written, on, written on the caps, and now the only trick is to make sure the bottle goes back in face in the right way. Yeah. Uh, I think I'll do that as well. They'll go into a rack and they'll go in in product code order. But, um, I'll also write the codes on the lids. Write it on the rack too so that you put it back in the right spot. Oh, yeah. Ooh. So many good suggestions. Well, that one I stole from, you know, local gaming stores, yeah. friendly or otherwise. I haven't done that for my other racks. Because I've still been in the process of figuring out whether or not they're in the right spots. Um, but I've spent quite a bit of money on paint racks in the last few weeks. Because I bought three to put the, the Army Painter Air Paint set in. Because it was 126 paints or something. Jeez. Um, did you happen to look up what that speed paint mega set had in it? Oh, sorry, I've been talking to myself because I'm an idiot. <laughs> um, no, I hadn't because I was doing something to my boots. Oh, right. Um, but I was actually looking it up now, and I was saying all of that to you with the both hands typing and push to talk off. Off, and, yeah. Uh, well, now that you've done your rehearsal... Well, I've done my rehearsal and I've done my warm up. Um, so, the Speed Paint Mega Set is the one with the twenty four paints, right? One hundred ninety eight bucks, right? Uh, 
I think oh, you probably got yours cheaper. But... 175 or something. Yeah. Uh, that's actually what I ordered. I right. didn't get the starter set. You got which the Which is set. Uh, smaller. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. I'm even more pleased. Yeah, so am I. I thought that, you know, 24 as a starter set was, wow, there must be like a thousand of these things. <laughs> no. no, actually. Yeah, you got the same thing I did. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, no, I'm just going to have to get some uh, spray can varnish, I guess. Yeah. Because I started looking up, how do I actually use this stuff, and do people like it? And, uh, yeah, varnish. Yeah, all you've read, the, you read all of the reactivation threads. Well, I didn't read them. I did uh, watch the Army Painter's own video on it. Mm -hmm. Five tips to use when using speed paint. Yeah. Number five, varnish your miniatures before doing anything else to them. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> well, that's if you don't want to... I mean, because you can obviously play with that reactivation to get other effects, but if you're just, just speed painting for speed painting, then whacking a coat of varnish on them is not... The end of the world. Um, yeah, if it helps, and it may or may not, because uh, different people have different preferences as far as those sorts of products is concerned, but I use the Micador mat. Mm, you've recommended that one to me before. Yeah. I've actually got it linked, uh, bookmarked. Uh, at Officeworks mm -hmm. because the local store never carries it, but they no. say they can order it in in a few days. Yeah, the, and every, all of my local stores, because there are four or five that are within 15 or 20 minutes drive. It's just, yeah. yeah, it's like inundated with Officeworks. Um, it's almost like a plague of Officeworks. Um, they Some never carry them. They're, they're never on the shelf, so... Um, me being me, I just order them five cans at a time delivered. Well, that's an idea. But I'm always, you know, I'm the guy who looks for an excuse to go out. Yeah, right. And I'm, you're the guy who looks for, for an, an excuse, excuse to, to stay not. home. <laughs> exactly right. We had training this week at work that uh, I didn't attend um, because you had to go into the office for it. And they're saying, uh, you need to do this training. And I'm like, uh, you need to do a remote session because there are people who are remote. And they went, yeah, yeah, that'll happen next week. I'm like, sweet. See you there. No, you won't. <laughs> well, no, I'll have my video turned off. But the point is, is that I'm not going into the office for things like that. If there's something really important, I then don't sure. don't blame you. I can't. I mean, aside from the fact that I'm an antisocial sort anyway, um, Willow is a problem because she's uh, deeply anxious and she has very strong separation anxiety. And Well, I can understand that in a dog, to be honest. Yeah, well, she's... Hearing impaired. She's still, so, yeah. So. But, but she's hearing impaired, and that's the big problem. It's got nothing to be do said about being torn from her litter mates and her mother. Yeah. At an early age and at sent an off age. to live with strangers. Yeah. I mean, if you did that to a human child, it'd mess them up. Oh, wait, it's called an orphanage. Mm. Or the social worker system. Yeah, there are all sorts of problems. Now. There's all sorts of problems there. But, um, the manifestation of that in my life is her. And so mm. going out during the day has actually become a thing. Now, I can't hold work to ransom because of I have a, a nervous dog, but the world has changed. They've embraced remote workers... So, so you're going to embrace that back, and I don't blame you. Absolutely. Excuse me. 
I'm not sure if that boat made it on the air. No, nope, it did not. Then I have excellent reflexes. <laughs> <laughs> Push to burp. Yep. I do actually have a program for that. Um, really? Yeah, it's a virtual microphone uh, that you run your regular microphone into and then you can voice warp or play a oh. soundboard, etc. Right. with your regular speech. I got it going for a... a uh, yeah. A, a role-playing game session that hasn't yet materialized in which I was going to play a null character, G N O L L. So, mm-hmm. you know, high headed monstrous guys. Whose only language was null. Yeah. So what I did was I scoured the internet for every single free null sound effect. Right. And put it into this soundboard. Right. <laughs> and instead of talking I was just gonna play you know, hyena noises, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and it would have annoyed people no end, but it would Absolutely. have been great. It would have been great. I hope it comes off someday. Hmm. But yeah, you could have burped or whatever with the the voice warper effect. or Push to burp. Yeah, push to burp, literally. Hmm. If you had a burp soundboard. But no, that one was all natural. And it was pretty good. A real teeth rattler. So, you know, you haven't actually said what you're painting today, but I'm going to take a guess and say that it is Dark Elf Crossbowman. That's a pretty damn good guess. The crossbows are extremely Chinese expired shukanoos. Um, uh, repeating magazines. Repeating magazine, yeah. yeah. Which is cool for a crossbow design, you know, 2,000 years ago. It is. Seeing as how it's taken, well, up until modern days to come up again with a an improvement on that for a repeating crossbow magazine. Mm. And Todd liked them so much he named one of the fighters in Interceptor after it. Hmm. Well, if you're going with archery theme, there's only so many things that you can yes. name them after yes. without delving into the world of guns. Because I know he's got the yaddle addle in there, and mm-hmm. that's more of a throwing spear thing. And the slingshot, which isn't exactly a... Oh, it's... it's but it is, but it's, it's also something different. It's an so, arcane yeah. missile weapon. Archaic. Archaic? Uh, yes. Well, in Aetherstream, it's arcane too. Fair enough. Looking forward to coming to grips with it. Did you like the update that was posted? I have not seen it. Uh, last update I saw came out of Ralpatha and it was saying, oh, we started chipping. Uh, for the Dwarf Dungeoneers. Dwarf Dwarf Dungeoneers. When was that? Uh, nine o'clock last night in my time, so oh, there you ten go. o'clock for you. Looking forward to those. Well, when... Um, when I last went to Kickstarter, there was a little button on that page for the Dwarf Dungeoneers that said, would you like to anonymously request an update from the creator? And I said, mm-hmm. yes. I guess someone's listened. <laughs> yep. Although not so anonymous now. Well, yeah. I put in my 
two cents a couple of weeks ago before I went away on holiday actually there might have been a few things along the lines of what the so oh did you mean the uh, manufacturer's test prints update mm -hmm. yeah I think I comment, uh, commented on it right I thought I did you weren't the guy asking for the STL. No. Uh, no. I did not comment on it on Kickstarter. I did it on the Aetherstream uh, Facebook group. Ah, right. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That's something else to look forward to, people. Come and join that group. Hmm. Let me um, see if I can find a link for it. Have I ever mentioned how much I love Facebook? Uh, no, and I can't imagine why you would. Because I don't. Hmm. No Facebook, I don't want to invite friends to the group. I just want a general invite link. I want to invite not friends to the group. Exactly. There we go. There's a link to it in the uh, Twitch chat. And if you're watching it later on uh, YouTube, well, I don't know. Yeah. How do we do Maybe that? Maybe Dan will add it in the, in the video comments. notes. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. If I remember. Well, we do cover a whole breadth of topics, and it's hard to remember every single one. Oh, even if we only covered one topic, I'd still find it hard to remember. <laughs> My brain has been going off like a frog in a sock. Sorry, uh... YouTube just started screaming at me for a second. I missed what you said. <laughs> That's all right. That's a Are you losing your voice? <clears throat> Going a bit husky. Yeah. We'll need another drink. Well, ladies love a husky voice. <laughs> My lady's not fond of me this morning, that's for sure. Well, I doubt there's very little I can do about it, aside from offer you moral support. <laughs> it's all right. She got on her high horse about something and I cracked it. So, reparations will be made later. Here's a ring I've been saving for a rainy day. Ah, oh, no. <laughs> Harry Potter toy. <laughs> Well, it's a birthday Monday, so there are gifts awaiting. Oh, happy birthday, Joe. 21 again. 21 again. Rule number six, a lady never ages past 21. Well, we I've had this other rule that, 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 that when you get to 40, you just start counting backwards. You know, I like the sound of that. Life begins at 40 and all that kind of stuff. So, um, I guess that's fine if you expect to be in your grave by 80. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you consider the kind of behaviour that goes on in your late 70s, it's, it's not that inaccurate, really. Uh, yes, that's... Yeah, now that you've pointed that out, that's significantly more apt than it was on first examination. Mm. Just for the record, rule number seven is lady is always right. And rule, and rule number, number eight is the lady is always right, especially when she's wrong. Yeah. 
No, rule number eight is if the lady is wrong. See rule number seven. Anyway, there are rules that help keep me out of trouble. Well. Or get me into trouble. Or get you into trouble. <laughs> Depending on the audience, I gather. Oh, uh, yeah, I suppose. Some take it as flirtatious, rule number six. Mm. And it gets me into trouble. But it's good when you've got an old duck who's turned up with an arm full of crap and thrusts it upon you. Mm. And if she makes a comment about feeling old, and I said, oh, how old? 50, 55, maybe? You're not that old. And then she gives a playful punch or tap on the shoulder. Oh, oh I'm actually 80. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Thank you for saying so, and and all that, and yes. they go away, you know, not intimidated. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, which is something I have a bit of a problem with at work occasionally. Well, you're a um, a sizable fellow, and six five and one hundred and fifty kilos. And yeah, and so you not would... slovenly fat, but fairly well built, and you would yeah, tower yeah, over these women. Yes, and a lot of men as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and that was part of what sparked my big depression cycle. Oh, a negative reaction at work. Yeah, so there's this bloke who started illegally dumping his shit in our skip. Mm -hmm. So I wandered over to him and I said, excuse me, did you know that we pay $7 million a year for garbage disposal? Thank you for adding to it. And he absolutely cracked the shits. Yeah. So I walked away, and then he storms off into the store and starts making a goose of himself to the boss, mm. who's a 50-year-old woman uh, with a thick accent and is about five foot nothing tall. Yeah. And she sorted him out eventually. Right. But he was screaming about how I was a gorilla and that I had assaulted him and shit like that. I, I never got within six feet of him. Right. You know. <clears throat> and I'm like, I don't need this shit in my life. No. And so I was feeling really, really low about that for several days and that sparked other low feelings and then I just spiraled out of control for a little bit hmm so yeah happens. Oh, it certainly did confrontations with other people are not my forte you know what the problem was though this mm. bloke was only about five foot four himself he had a real napoleon syndrome about yeah him. he said <laughs> I, after i said to him you know it was seven million bucks a year Thank you for adding to it. He says, do you know how much money I spend in this store? And I wanted to say so much. Mm -hmm. If it's seven million, seven million and one dollars, go for your life. Yeah. Prick. Yeah. But, you know, I've been told I'm not allowed to hammer people into the ground. Well, <laughs> aside from it being a workplace issue, there are general laws against that sort of thing anyway. Yeah, it's a thirteen hundred seventy eight dollar fine. Right. That you. Assault. Oh. Yeah, because I'm white, it's probably three years. <laughs> <laughs> Must remember disclaimer on video. <laughs> uh, never mind. <laughs> Disclaimer, I'm white. No, no Occasionally I say things that, you know, <laughs> yeah. people that aren't might take offence <laughs> with. Yeah. Well, you also have to... Not that anybody who, who is of the non-male gaming persuasion is likely to be watching this, but... Um, it, it's an interesting thing, Matty, because I had... I had a confrontation with someone while we were on vacation. 
I'm sorry to hear that. Well, we were down at Admiral's Arch, which, if anybody's terribly interested, is a tourist attraction on Kangaroo Island where there is a sea-carved arch um, that people use for photo opportunities a lot. It's a very pretty spot. They've gone to a lot of effort to put in good walkways with good stairs um, to enable you to take selfies or group shots framed mm. by this arch with the ocean in the background. Right? Very pretty. Re- really nice place. There is a lot of signage around that says, and, and I'm paraphrasing, but this is a fragile environment. Please don't walk on it. Please don't litter it. Um, you know, words to that effect, which is, as far as I'm concerned, it's just common sense and that those rules should be applied to everywhere. But anyhow, in the course of our visit, there was one, let's use the term gentleman, who had decided that his social media exposition of his particular uh, uh, experience was more important than the please don't step off the path sign and he was in the middle of the vegetation taking some kind of a random video of him I think it was of himself anyhow May not have been. He may have been using the other camera and been taking video footage of something else. Never mind. On his way out of the vegetation, he stood on at least three different plants. And I was a bit perturbed by that, but I didn't say anything. Anyhow, I get to the car park, and here's one of his friends peeling an orange and throwing the orange peel into the vegetation well that's delightful I mean they teach every school child that orange rinds don't biodegrade for years on their own yeah and and I you know, very politely pointed out to him that he was littering and he was most indignant and most insistent that what he was doing was okay because it was biodegradable at which point, unfortunately, I lost my shit. I think that's fair enough. Yes, when faced with, you know, when 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 faced with, oh, I want to use the term accidental ignorance, but maybe that's, that's not pretty a thing. Late. Yeah, but you know, in. When, when somebody's just simply unaware because, you know, it's obscure or, you know, they, they, they couldn't reasonably be expected to know, then it's a different story. But when you've got somebody who's just doing something for their own convenience and then comes up with an excuse, I have a far less tolerance. So... The, the worst part about all of this was is that he's now had a negative experience because he's now interacted with a, quote, local, unquote, who's given him a hard time. And so he's going to have developed a negative attitude towards it. And so rather than actually doing any good, I've probably actually made the situation worse because the next time he does something like that, it'll probably be with a, a fuck you associated with it, rather than just a, oh, this is okay. Mm. And, um, I was talking to the... Talking to the handler that we had the private showing with at the, the Raptor Centre, and he was in complete agreement about the fact that orange peel is absolutely litter. Belongs nowhere. Like, there's no orange trees on Kangaroo Island. They just don't exist. Mm-hmm. So yeah. there's nothing There's nothing native about that kind of litter whatsoever. 
and they do persist on the ground for literally years. months months years yeah i agree they when they they dry up they stay around for a long time anyhow so i take it that... from your description that this was some sort of foreigner uh yeah wasn't gonna go there he was a tourist not is... not an australian yeah absolutely not Okay, so I'll take back my comment about every single school child in this country learns not to yeah. throw orange peel around because it's litter, because it doesn't biodegrade in a short order. Mm. It's not an apple core. Nope. So that kind of ignorance may be slightly excused, is yeah. what I'm going with. But, with that. Yeah. I I think I think he knew he wasn't doing the right thing, but you know Well, of course. Of course. I mean littering is a universal thing and people universally know it's bad. Mm -hmm. Even in cultures where they don't care as much. Yeah. But then you get other cultures like uh, Japan, for example, where or Singapore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was going to say Singapore. Well, Singapore is more out of fear, I think, whereas Japan is more out of civic pride. Yeah, well, the fact that you can't buy chewing gum in Singapore. Yeah. That's a, that's what I mean by like mm. it's more punitive yeah. than than out of civic pride. Mm So I do have a question. Mm -hmm. Did you sink your yacht? Never got the chance. You never got the chance. Never got the chance. And, and it's an interesting story. It's not a quick story, but it's an interesting story. Um, so we were staying on Pelican Lagoon, mm. which is a tidal saltwater lagoon uh, on Kangaroo Island. Um there is a, a deeper water channel in Pelican Lagoon that they used to be, be able to bring commercial catches up to take away the salt that they were um, mining. Which, well, no, because it, it was out of a salt lake, so they were harvesting yeah, it more okay. than harvest. Yeah, it, it, it's a difficult thing to describe accurately anyhow I, there were, I know the process yeah it's evaporation yeah but so um they they built a 10 kilometer narrow gauge railway and they had a steam locomotive that they brought out from england and assembled on the dock and you know it was a thing um this is a long long time ago that operation shut down um I think even prior to the Second World War. So the jetty's long gone. Um, the Principality of Muston was named after the guy, Muston, who, who owned the business and all that kind of stuff. But the Principality of Muston, I think, consists of eight houses, and that's it. There's not even a post office there. Um, anyhow, the rest of Pelican Lagoon is really shallow. Like um, 30, 40, 50 centimetres deep, nothing any more than that. Um, and so it's navigable in flat bottom kayaks, which we've got, um, for most of the, the time, but uh, the launching area where we were launching and retrieving the kayaks from we had to be within sort of 
two hours of high tide each side. Um, otherwise, you, it was a long, muddy slog to get the kayak in, and it was a soft bottom. And they have uh, a um, they have a shellfish in there. It's about a foot long, sort of a tapered shell. It's a it's a mollusk, so you know it's got an open top and all that kind of stuff. But they they I think they're cool. Some name involves something to do with razor or something, razor fish or something like that. Mm. I, I can't remember exactly. Joe just looked them up and described them to me, but um, they're ridiculously sharp. You step on them in bare feet, and you can kiss your bottom of your foot goodbye. Right? Now you've got a significant injury. Um, so walking out over the top of that sort of stuff, no fun. The worst part of which was, is that to get to deep enough water to float the yacht, I would have been slogging out across this mud, because it turns out the model that I chose, it has a very deep keel on it, it's probably about 18 inches deep, which meant that I would have had to have got to the channel, basically to sail it, and so... After assembling it and it sitting there for a week while we waited for the high wind to die down and then going out to figure out that oh, this really was going to be a monumental pain and very messy and possibly a waste of time, uh, I ended up disassembling it and putting it back in its box. So it hasn't actually gotten wet yet. <laughs> oh, Dan. Yeah. So, remember when you were stressing about how you weren't going to get it before you left? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All that angst, all that stress, all that. Yeah. I quite like that bronze color going on. This is true copper. Copper, bronze, same difference. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> they're, they're very similar. They are. Use them interchangeably. Have I ever mentioned I like orange and purple? And yeah, you have. Copper is basically, you know, metallic orange. So, I'm doing some Shazvasti for Infinity. I mm. think you might like the colour scheme on this Shazvasti. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, I thought Infinity was all humans in suits. Uh, looked, yes, uh, except uh, for aliens in suits. suits. So you can see okay. that it started this I story. didn't realise it had aliens. Yeah, it's got aliens in it. Oh, I like the look of that model. Oh, they oh. Yeah, don't show me any more. I, I can't yeah. afford to buy more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, you can't afford to buy infinity. Well, that's a... let's just leave it there. Like the 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 anime inspiration. Like this is a this is a Shazvasti in a suit. You can see the 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 absolute anime. Screams mm. like you would absolutely love knowing that you build Gundams. You would absolutely love most of the Infinity tags, which are the the armored suits. Yeah, yeah. These are things that I want and don't need in my life. Yeah. Because, well, those puppies are about seventy bucks each, so. So good... actually, actually cheaper than what I would build. <laughs> so the... because they started about a hundred Australian. The Gundam kits, they're about a hundred each, are they? Well, the ones that I would deem to yeah, build, right. yeah. Okay, yeah. But they're uh, more advanced, more parts. Yeah. Instead of the cheap ones, which are around thirty to forty. Yeah. Which I don't like at all. They're a insult to my intelligence and there abilities. Well, and they're not ever... very good for you for money. No. I've only ever built one of the 30 or $40 ones. 
it's, a, it's an ashtray red frame, I think. But it's long gone. Oh, uh, yeah. I have uh, built one of those in a small scale, but with the high part count, and it was about 70 bucks. Yeah, right. Good kit, very detailed, very articulate, but um, yeah, I guess I built that shortly after it came out in, would have been 2015 or 16. Yeah, right. And uh, I packed it up when I moved out of that house and into another, and it hasn't seen the light of day since. Hmm. Well, that's a shame. Yeah. Well, I've got about 60 of them, <laughs> I guess, uh, in that sort of thing. Uh, slightly disassembled and in Ziploc bags, in boxes. Right. I definitely don't have the shelf space for it. No. I didn't have the shelf space for it the first time I started building them. Right. And then I moved, I packed those up, moved... Uh, and then filled all my available shelf space with new kits. As you and then do. Packed all those up and moved. Yep. <laughs> As you do. As you do. And now I've filled up all my available shelf space with new kits instead of unpacking old ones because I'm an idiot. No, no, because that's what you do. Well, yeah, I know. Because I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> So I am not pointing the camera at my current Formula One car kit no, collection. No, you're not. And no, I'm, I'm not, not. And I'm certainly not casting aspersions. <laughs> I mean, God, there have been times when I've tried to rebuy old kits that I've put together. Mm-hmm. Just so I can put them back together again instead of fishing them out of my moving boxes. Yeah. I, I, sorry, I don't see anything wrong with that. <laughs> I know you don't, but I do because I can't afford it. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Have you got ready access to these boxes? They are not more than five metres away. There you go. In fact, I could see them, if not for the fact that they're hiding behind a couch. Right. The couch is strategically placed. Yep. Yes. Another friend of mine was lamenting to me some months ago about his prodigious unconstructed, unpainted wargaming collection and I, and I I chided him gently and said that I was not the right person to come to for fiscally responsible advice. Yeah. So, and, and this leads into the next story, which is, I was at FLGS last weekend um, which happens to be House of War in Ringwood in Victoria. Um, and I, I wandered around the end of an aisle that I don't normally wander around the end of, um, which in this case happens to be the front of the aisle rather than the end of the aisle, just because I like the sides. Um, and they had a couple of copies of War Games Illustrated sitting there, and these War Games Illustrated happen, as they do, they have free samples in, you know, the, the magazines in a bag and the free samples in the front of the bag. And they've had various different things over the years, lots and lots and lots of different stuff. Um, these particular magazines happen to have some sprues in them for the epic scale Napoleonic that they've done following on from their mm. epic scale American Civil War. Um, and I've been a bit annoyed with Warlord Games 
in the last couple of years because they used to have an exceptional shipping policy. They used to have exceptional shipping rates and they, you know, they, they treated us in Australia as virtually, as though we were living in England, virtually. Not quite, but um, it was good. It, it was extremely good from the perspective of being able to pick up um, boxes of plastic at reasonable prices and get them shipped to the other side of the world for reasonable prices. It was ex excellent. Now, things happened and they're running a business and and they were, were not making money. They were probably losing a little bit of money on this. And there were some local retailers who had tried stocking their stuff but were being undercut by the 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 online sort of nature of the way that warlords were doing stuff so yeah. they addressed all of this but they addressed it so savagely in the other direction that it became untenable basically to to purchase any stuff from them further and in the meantime, none of the local retailers had actually picked up any of their stock. So they were running all of these deals that were, were great, um, but they lumped Australia in with America. So now you're paying for their product in US dollars and you are paying US dollars for shipping from America. So they're no longer shipping oh, it from oh England, God. they're shipping it from America. So, you know, stuff basically yeah. tripled. Oh, I've yep. missed this bit. Um, and, and at the same time, they started hammering, well, I don't know about everybody, but me, with advertising. Oh, buy this, buy this, buy this. And I'm like, well, no, because... I, I, you know, you tripled the cost. You, you basically, <laughs> well, yeah, you tripled the cost. So, and and I got a bit annoyed with them. Anyhow, um, so when they announced all of that Napoleonic, um, epic scale stuff, I, I basically wasn't interested because it's like, oh well, it's more stuff that I can't afford because. Well, you know, can afford, but choose not to afford because you guys have nerfed shipping rates to Australia, basically. Um, and anyhow, these magazines had sprues from the Napoleonic stuff in it. And I picked them up and I looked at the figures. And they had one magazine there that had infantry in it. They had one magazine there that had cavalry in it. So I picked them up and I went, hmm, you know what? This is good research for Demon World because we'd like to take Demon World into plastic and... Here's, here's a good idea of how you put together a set of sprues that have got a nice figure mix on it so that when you buy multiple sprues, you end up building up a, you know, a reasonable army. So, okay, I'll grab those. So I grabbed them. Sadly for me, <laughs> one of these natures that looks at that and then goes, oh, wouldn't that be cool to have a Napoleonic army in that scale? Hmm. So over the course of the week, I've been failing resistance rolls. And uh, I ended up going out and adding to the purchase, shall we say. But oh dear. I did it through a local. I didn't go to Warlords Direct because, again, the shipping is monstrous. And um, even with the exchange rate being favourable, it's like, well, no. At this point, I will support the, the local guy. So, shout out to War and Peace Games. Yes. Yes, that's where I ordered my speed paint from. Yep. My, my speed paints are coming from the combat company, but, um, yeah, I spend a fair bit of money with combat company and War and Peace Games and frontline hobbies, and... Those are the guys that are, at least locally in Australia, that I think are doing it right. So, 
I mean, Frontline's mm. huge. Like, they they advertise themselves as Australia's biggest hobby shop, so they'd have to be pretty big. But, um, I've had very, very good experiences with them. Like, you, know, you remember the Lamborghini saga? I do. Yeah. Oh, I see. Frontline's a more generalist hobby shop. Yeah, they do war games and stuff, but they, they also do hobby, uh, you know, they do radio control and they do train sets and... Lego. Lego and stuff like that. So it's a... Ooh. Hmm? What have you looked at? I just looked up uh, Frontline and on their front page, they've got pre-order Bandai Gundam Real Grade 144 High New. I'm like, <laughs> I want that. <laughs> <laughs> and for 90 bucks, seeing as how it's probably 110 to 130 anywhere else I'd get it. Hmm. But do I really need another high new kit? <laughs> need. What is this need thing you speak of? Because <laughs> I've got a high new kit in the... Uh, in the box, in, behind in the couch. In the boxes, behind the couch. In fact, it was such a pretty looking kit that I kept the box and I used it to box up the, uh, the other kits as well. Yeah. <laughs> but I haven't unpacked it because it's actually pretty freaking huge and it needs a stand to support it and the stand is also pretty freaking huge right okay so it's gorgeous no room to display it no. and so i'm thinking a smaller version of it or one 144 instead of a one 100 yeah <laughs> maybe they do one 100s they do 160s Oh, no. It's I've not... also seen a 144. Okay, that would be gargantuan. Uh, yeah, it was about a metre tall. Yeah, right. No, it's it, the, the 1 to 100 piques my interest because that's effectively 15 millimetre. So, well, I got a couple of, uh, well, quite a lot. It's actually my preferred scale yeah. in those sorts of kits. Mm. So they would go with the uh, critical mass figures. Mm. No, that's an idea. And thus, dream fuel is consumed, and thus we support the economy by continuing to pour money back into it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I gotta be strong. <laughs> I gotta be strong. And you gotta mash I... that button as hard as you possibly can with all of that strength. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, here's a, a related but unrelated story then from last night. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been having beers with a couple of the boys from work Yeah. Uh, on Thursdays and or Fridays recently. Um, and at knockoff time yesterday, uh, did a great big storm blew in over the area and it bucketed down rain for about an hour and a half. Right. So we didn't have our beers outside. No. Um, we instead had them inside. You but since the since the main bar was absolutely packed, yeah, we couldn't get a table. Right. So we went into the Pokies Lounge. Right. Which was, you know. There's a couple of armchairs and some tables and yeah. a sofa. Yeah. I took the sofa, the other guys took the armchairs, so we all sat around a low table and we talked our shit. One of the guys, the boss actually, has a, a bit of a pokies problem. Oh. And the other guy uh, was, you know, a bit pissed off with him because he stood him up last night. They're both soccer fans and... yeah. Uh, the boss stood up the other bloke uh, for watching the Australia v Japan soccer match on Thursday night. Right. Uh, they were going to get together, but, you know, just uh, bailed on him and didn't say anything. It was like, 
he was pissed off. Mm-hmm. So, just to irk him, sat in the pokey lounge, <laughs> which right. was good because you know, uh, comfy seats and relatively quiet aside from the the pinging of the machines. Yeah. The boss starts twitching and he goes off to put twenty bucks in the machine and doesn't win a single spin. Mm-hmm. And when he stood up, he's dropped a fifty cent piece out of his wallet. Right. Or out of his pocket or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I reach over and pick it up. And I say to the other bloke, I'm the only one who's gonna be walking out of here with more money than what he started with. Yeah. And I show him a fifty cent piece and we both crack up for two minutes. And then the boss comes back and I show it to him and he's all depressed about it. <laughs> right. Uh yeah, that's basically the story. Yeah. Um so yeah, smashing buttons. Leaving you need to leave the one armed <laughs> bandits alone. You just do. Yes. Yes. Seven is it nine percent or seven percent return? I think it might be seven percent return. Like you you're literally going into a situation where the odds are absolutely stacked against you yeah i mean he's one of these guys who got the bug because he had one big win once yep he got two and a half grand out of that one machine and that's the only machine he'll ever play ever Mm -hmm. but he twitches hard when he's near it and so he dropped 50 bucks in it and i'm like idiot so how long drinking that money yeah exactly right (laughs) Exactly right, but <laughs> it'd how... last longer. Boy. <laughs> so he wins a couple of grand, and then over the next ten years, he puts that couple of grand back. No, he put that money back in over the course of the next three hours. Oh, really? Really. So he walked away with net nothing. Yeah, he got two and a half grand out, and then he put it back into the machine. Is the way he told that story. Well, that's and just... it was gone by daybreak. That's just dopey. Yeah, but now he's hooked. He's got the bug. Mm. I could do that again. I could walk out a net zero. It's like, uh, <laughs> really? Uh, there's some interesting psychology there. Oh yeah, You're not a psychologist. Just spent a lot of time talking to I I really annoyed one of my previous employers because they took us to the races, the Hillsville races, for our Christmas lunch one year. And they gave everybody a $20 voucher to go betting on the horse races. There were six races being run that day, and they said, here's 20 bucks, go and have fun betting on the races. And I went straight up to the cashier's counter and cashed it out. And they went, what are you doing? And I went, well, I'm leaving here 20 bucks ahead. <laughs> oh, dear, oh dear. And that was that was really annoying. It's like, well, aren't you going to entertain yourself by betting on the races? And I, I don't find that entertaining at all. Thanks very much. I'm going to go use this twenty bucks to to actually buy something that does entertain me. Perfectly fair and reasonable. Position Absolutely, from but... where you're sitting, and their position is perfectly fair and reasonable to them as well. Mm-hmm. It's just a really bad precedent. Yes. And and I had to get dressed up for that malarkey. Like you're not allowed to go to the races dressed like anything. You have to put your best clothes on to go and get drunk and fall down and roll around in the grass and lose money and whatever. Because it's respectable, don't you know? That's why you need to go to the trots instead. Yeah, well. No, I don't believe that. I believe in going to the races dressed like a bum. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that whole new frock thing and fascinator shit, that's all for the women folk. Yeah, well, Bloke can turn up however he feels like. Yeah, that's actually not true. Not not that particular day anyway. Like, there was a strict dress code and they wouldn't uh, let you in if you didn't adhere. I wouldn't so. go to a day like that. Uh, right. I would have said, stick your Christmas party up. <sighs> well, 
Well, uh, by taking the 20 bucks, I think I did, didn't I? Yeah, to an extent. Well, they, they paid for lunch and drinks and stuff like that, so... Mm, okay. But so that's, that's just not my scene. Like, it's... They did other stuff. So they did a, a Christmas lunch at a winery one day. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Trouble. The behaviour after one o'clock, it just spiralled. Yeah, I've done Christmas parties like that. Mm. Fuzzy memories. <laughs> Which are better than memories of fuzzies. Oh, well, I like not. memories of fuzzies too. Hmm. And fuzzy memories of fuzzies. What was that about a content warning? Yeah, yeah. there might have to be two. Might have to copy and paste it. Well, I think that's sensible anyway. Mm. So, how'd your boots go? Sorted? Um, yeah, well, I'm waiting for the polish to dry onto a state. Um, only takes an hour, really. Right. Uh, so, they've had that hour. Uh, and then I'm going to brush it off, and then spit shine, maybe, if I don't feel like painting. Or if I find something good to watch on TV, I've got um, Saturday today, isn't it? I've got Friday's Grand Sumo Tournament highlights to watch at some point today. Right. I don't think I will spit shine through them, because I actually like to watch it, instead of just listen to it. Uh, so I will probably do some painting instead. Mm. Or, no, actually, because I've got, um, uh, I've got a game after this. Oh, good God, I'm all over the place. Mm. Sounds like and I need Saturday to... was busier than you thought it was. It is, actually. I thought I'd have a free Saturday, to be honest, because Andrea's gone out of town. Right. Which is good, um, not because of anything negative, but she's getting to know her daughter's in-laws, which is nice. Right. Uh, they're starting to get very serious, those two. Right. Um, which is good because he earns six figures and she's a sales girl, basically, but on six figures also, selling uh, teeth straightening products to dentists. Cool. And I'm like, Mm, there's probably not that much of a future in that if you're too good at your job. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hate to tell you this, but people are having babies all the time. Yeah, but she's selling the, the technology. She's not selling the... To the end user, she's selling to the dentists who implement yes. it. Yeah, but that's okay. There are new dentists all the time. Oh, Every yes. year there's a new batch of dentists come out. Yeah, but how many of them start up their own business? Most Enough. of them go to work. For... Enough. I've never met a young dentist outside of a teaching college. Haven't you? Never. You're obviously going to the wrong bars. Well, yeah. Or, or you're going to the right ones. Friday nights, uh, where we've been going drinking, is tradies nights. Oh, <laughs> So, <laughs> not a lot of talent, but the talent that is there is worth looking at. Right. I Actually, thought that the, one... the, the talent was there was probably in the market for a tradie. Exactly. Mm. Worth looking at. I didn't say worth talking to or worth touching. Although there was one really, really attractive bird hanging on a bloke at the poking machines mm. and he was really nice and he was a real soy boy 
I'm not sure know. what that means. Uh, you know the sto- the soy boy stereotype, surely. Mm. No. Like a hipster, except even more effeminate. Oh. So soy comes from the, the 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 chosen milk product in coffee. Yes. Okay. Or in life generally. In life generally. Has an omelette you know, made with soy milk. Or, you know, uh, tofu. Made with soy. <laughs> well, tofu is soy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, patchy beard from not enough testosterone because te- uh, soy destroys it and Blah, 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 blah. We can go into some really offensive stereotypes. Not people like you and me, <laughs> shall we say. Others. <laughs> Are there others. Anyway, here's this 8 out of 10 hanging on this bloke who, you know, looked like a stiff breeze would knock him over. Yeah. And he's just sitting there playing the machines and paying her no mind. Mm. And, yeah. Don't get it. I'm reminded Don't of something <laughs> that uh, one of the football commentators said years ago now, but it's always stuck with me. I'm trying to think of the guy's name, but I can't think of it. Probably doesn't really matter. Anyhow, he said, he said something along the lines of, it doesn't matter how good she looks. Some other bloke is sick and tired of putting up with her crap. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's pretty good. So, words to live by, I think. It's like, are you missing out? Unlikely. On the balance of things. I'm reminded of something that um, Paul Newman said. He said, why would I go out for a burger when I can come home for steak? He was talking about giant Woodward, but, you know. They had their ups and downs too. Yeah. Anyway, to get back to where I was going to go for uh, <laughs> Soy Boys. <laughs> we back, we haven't back. derailed this conversation more than about a dozen <laughs> times so far. Yeah, we haven't gone in the circle once. Not yet. Um. So, my free Saturday, I was thinking I might actually be able to get over to the nearest shopping centre and pick up some table lamps because... The table lamp on my painting table uh, kind of blew up on Thursday night. Blew up? Mm. The bulb went... Oh, right. And and it actually, like, shattered. Mm. That's I could tell it was good. going when I was taking photos of the... Um, the Furies. Ice, the eye switches, yeah. Yeah, because most of the light that was coming off it was uh, flickering and I could really see it on the screen yeah. of my phone as I'm taking it. Uh, I don't know how to describe it, but it was, the effect was the light was basically pulsing yeah, really, really quickly. Yeah, and it shows the, the filaments the, failing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was it. And... Mm, Eight out of the ten photos I took were just ruined by that. Mm -hmm. And the last two I took that I ended up posting, and uh, (laughs) I just turned that light off, which is why the lighting was worse than usually is. Mm. Anyway, I was thinking I'd duck over there to pick up some some table lamps. Right. Just cheap ones. But... (laughs) You won't have time. I, I won't have time between... Uh, the game tonight and 
Or well, maybe. Maybe I, I need to check. But yeah. It's a it's kind of a shame you don't have a or maybe you do, a, a Bunnings in walking distance. Um my local Bunnings was wiped out in the Brisbane floods this year. Oh right. It is still closed. That's not or good. was still closed as of Tuesday. Right. Well, that's not good. Yeah, well, that's what you get for building on a floodplain. Mm -hmm. I believe my next closest Bunnings was also done. Yeah. But they're, uh, while on the same road as that Bunnings, it's about 4Ks up. Yeah. Um, 4Ks is too far to walk. Yeah, well, seeing as how it's... Uh, Four case to the nearest Bunnings, anyway. Mm -hmm. So then it's an it's a sixteen k return walk. Yeah, which uh, you know I've done before mm. and happily, but not lugging lamps, not lugging and lamps. not down a hundred and ten oh, hundred kph speed limit road. No, <laughs> that's no fun. Oh, that was one experience that was really interesting. Walking along a beach in Kangaroo Island at Emu Bay, uh, vehicles are permitted on that beach. So, walking down the waterline of a beach with a four-wheel drive coming straight at me—that was entertaining. Uh, yeah, I haven't done that since I was a kid. Mm. Um, Broom's Head, New South Wales. Yeah. So it was a lovely beach. Just shame about the traffic. Yeah. Because <laughs> there was quite a bit of it, considering how remote Kangaroo Island is and how few visitors and all that kind of stuff. There was probably a dozen cars on that beach. And that inevitably... Sound like a few visitors. Inevitably, like you're told to keep your speed down, like 20, 30 kilometres an hour... Inevitably, but someone always ends there's up a young guy 80. tearing it up. Yep. These guys remind me of Groot. Really? Yeah, it's just a hairstyle. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, okay. I see it now. Oh, and yeah, to answer your question of a few weeks ago, there are kangaroos on Kangaroo Island. Mm. They're Kangaroo Island kangaroos, which are a subspecies of the Western Grey. And so we did, big bastards. We there. did see one. Yeah, they're not as big as the Eastern Greys, but they're still not no. small. There aren't too many animals in the world as big as an eastern grey kangaroo. No. Um, we I saw, think from we, there you have to go up to elephants and giraffes. Yeah, something along those lines. <laughs> uh, we saw a lot of wallabies. We only saw one kangaroo. On our way mm. into Seal Bay to do the the seal tour um it rained and it hadn't rained for a while and so there was a lot of wallabies out drinking water from puddles in the tarmac which meant a very slow very considered drive in There's a lot of roadkill on Kangaroo Island. Speed limits are 110. And there's a lot of wildlife comes out around dusk. So, inevitably, there's a lot of roadkill. Mm. Which is very, very bad when people don't take the roadkill off the road. Because then you end up with a lot of secondary roadkill. And that's where you end up with things like dead raptors. and Yeah. Which is not good. To 
quote Mr. Burns. Beep, beep, out of my way. I'm a motorist. <laughs> well, within 20 minutes of being on the island, we were driving in towards Pelican Lagoon and we were overtaken by a couple of four-wheel drive utes and we were doing the speed limit and they would have been 60, 70 k's over, maybe. <sighs> I know it's not politic to say so, but people like that, I really hope they have a serious traffic accident. Yes, but on their own. <laughs> yes, on their own. But I hope that it comes for them soon. Before they hurt somebody else, hopefully. Yeah. I really have no time for recidivist speeders. Well, I'm a motorcyclist, so... I and do I'm a sp pedestrian. I do speed from time to time. But there's a time and a place. When no one else is around and the road is empty... Yeah, but the I'm thing is, primarily a pedestrian, so yeah, people like that tend to get up my goat. Especially if you're walking in a fifty or sixty zone, or even seventy. Yeah, you know, you can you can judge how fast a vehicle's supposed to be going, and you know if you got time to cross the road. Uh -huh. If someone's accelerating towards you in a seventy zone and he's getting up towards a hundred, yeah. you're like, oh shit, maybe I actually better start running. <laughs> And by then it's too late it's and he's already late. swerved to miss you. Yeah. Or clipped you. Hasn't yep. happened yet, fortunately. I've only been struck by a vehicle once. <sighs> Which was good fun. It wasn't too hard, but getting Ouch. a little bit of a bruise on my thigh. Hmm. That was a 80-something uh, bloke speeding out of a uh, nearby hospital driveway. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, boy. So he was only going, you know, 30 or 40. Right. Merging into traffic going at 60. But it's a signed 5 kph speed limit in yep. that hospital precinct. In that hospital, yeah. <laughs> so there might even be some Morissette irony in there somewhere. Probably. Uh, if I'm only going to be run over once, I'd prefer it to be like that. Mm-hmm. I'd prefer you not to be run over at all. Yeah, I'm too late for that. Just like drowning. Too late? <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a time and a place, and... In traffic, with pedestrians around, is not the time, not the place. Oh, you're talking about speeding. I was yeah. going to start about my uh, preferred Drowning. time time and place to drown. <laughs> Naked in a bathtub filled with champagne and many beautiful people around me. Right. And lines of, I don't know, some substance that I probably haven't touched but are there for the ambience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anyway. You know, it, um, all of that still didn't do Dolores O'Riordan very much. <laughs> I don't know who that is. I'm going to have to look her up. You are. It's a very sad story. Oh. Yes, okay.
That's a pretty impressive blood alcohol level to be mixing with drugs. Mm -hmm. Even prescription medication, which usually has the label, don't mix with alcohol. Mm -hmm. Suspect there were other things going on. Probably. Probably. She didn't have the easiest of lives. So Willie's told me my coke would be hit by 10 o'clock, and that's just them now. Well, there you go. Feeding my coke habit through all this. It's just because they Quite a had business, a, delivering coke. They had a, they had a better special than Coles. <laughs> uh, what's this about drowning in bathtubs? With your coke habit? <laughs> I could probably do that with the amount of coke that's being <laughs> delivered. But uh, to be honest, there are far more efficient ways of going about that. <laughs> yeah. Opening 300 cans to fill a bathtub just seems like a waste of time. Do it two litres at a time. True sure enough. And then there's the Mentos. Uh, I think you need Diet Coke for that. Yeah, I think it might have been a reaction with the chemicals in the Diet Coke rather than anything else. Hmm. Uh, the artificial sweetener, I think it is. Mm, yeah. I think you're right. But, uh... Joe got annoyed with me some months ago when I asked her to get four slabs of coke when she was shopping and she was like, you know, it hurts me to pick these things up. They're heavy and I have to get them into the back of the car and then I have to get them out the back of the car. So I'm like, yeah, okay, this is all a very fair point. I acknowledge that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get them delivered from now on. Oh, aren't you considerate? Well, Me, I would have said something like, this is how you build up the muscles to pick up the coke. <laughs> you start by picking up the coke and straining, and you do it enough times, and eventually it becomes less of a strain. This sounds like a workplace induction video for where you work. Pretty much. Hmm. That's how I've got my rippling physique. <laughs> My rippling physique came from too many packets of chips and lollies while I was away. No, no, that's jiggling. Yeah. So oh, sorry. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Wrong word. <laughs> I can't paint when I'm laughing. <laughs> yes. Oh, I've got a jiggling physique too. Uh, no, my, uh, my jiggling physique is... 10 kilos better than it was some months ago, so I need to turn that... Oh, that's back, good. ...put it back in the other direction. No, no. It's, oh. <laughs> yes. It, yeah, you, you confused me with your choice of the word better. Better, yes. <laughs> well, it, it jiggles better. It isn't better for me. Yeah, I'm actually fairly strong under all my blubber. Hmm. If someone uh, just liposuctioned me out, I'd probably be pretty good. Mm. The only use of the word strong I would adhere to at the moment involves odour. <laughs> oh, I get that too. And I think li liposuctioning me out would uh, help with that too, probably. Well, it would, because you wouldn't have quite so much insulation, so you wouldn't retain quite so much heat. So your cooling system mm. would be more effective, and therefore you probably wouldn't sweat so much. But, having said that, I have a very European um, body makeup, and so I sweat profusely. 
Yeah, I was uh, I was doing all right until I had to shift a couch in the sun yesterday. Oh yeah. Three seater couch. I had one end. Two blokes had the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the other disadvantage of your size. Well, there wouldn't have been another bloke to put on my end anyway. No, and they would go, oh, well, you're the bigger guy, so therefore you're the stronger guy, so therefore you can do the work of two at the other end. Yeah. Which is, you know, literally how it happens. Mm-hmm. And, you know, is fair too, because they weren't big blokes. One of them's 66, and the other one is a tiny little bloke. Mm. Well, they're both tiny little blokes. Even sixty-six year old, but yeah, anyway. Hmm. So this guy's going. I am Groot. Kachunk. You'll have to paint some green tweaks in as a yeah. Green highlights, just on the tips. So instead of inflicting my ten cases of cans on Joe, I'm now inflicting it on a Woolworths employee. Well, they get paid for it. That's the other thing to remember. They mm-hmm. get paid for it. I it... don't. No. Not... I'm not complaining. <laughs> did anything, I'm not complaining. Did anything ever happen with that um management thing or is that just completely gone away oh it was a mistake right actually the uh the funding was not there for that program right okay and will it, never be or probably like, not is that literally the end of the story because that's disappointing well i approached my manager about it the next day, time that I saw her, which was Wednesday of the week after the, the announcement came out. Yeah. And she said, oh, haven't you heard? I emailed you about it. Mm. No, I haven't had any email from you. What did you say? Oh, I said that it was a mistake and that you should disregard it. Mm. And I said, well, you didn't e- email me. And that's very disappointing considering that I had just teed up to cancel my income support Mm. (laughs) on the back of this promise that you had made. Yeah. Oh. Well, the money was never there, and I did email you. Here, see? I'll show you the email I sent you. She sent it to a wrong bloke. Yeah. Completely different on the go. I'm like, thanks. So yeah, there's that. Hmm. I reiterate, there's a very disappointing. Oh well. Yeah, I mean, you know, we 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 say oh well and we move on and all that kind of stuff, but at, you know, at some point, I'm hoping that the tide turns and that yeah well I had three job rejections just yesterday so (sighs) but I also missed a call from a company saying that some other funding that the government is going to give me had come through and could you please uh, get back to us with suitable times to discuss it well um, which I didn't get a chance to do because I was going to do it in my lunch break, which I didn't get yesterday. Right. Because <laughs> three-seater couch. Oh, three-seater couch and then a bunch of other shit. Mm-hmm. So anyway. that's that's on the cards for Monday? Or is yeah, that going to have to wait till Wednesday? I'll have to give them a call on uh, Monday during my lunch break. Mm, that you will absolutely take because 
<laughs> because I will need it. Because mm. if I don't get it, I will be extremely unhappy. Mm -hmm. And apparently I'm not nice when I'm extremely unhappy. I'm uh, terrifying in the <laughs> words of one little old lady. <gasps> or a gorilla thug in the... <laughs> the the eyes of the... a little man doing the wrong thing. Yeah. 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 I mean, he would have had cause to complain if you'd picked him up and put him in the dumpster. Yeah, well, I never got near him. I was polite. Mm -hmm. I had an even tone of voice. I just caught him doing the wrong thing. Yeah, and he And reacted. he didn't like being told off about it. Nope. And he knew he was doing the wrong thing. Yep. But... Best, but best he doesn't spend seven million dollars, so uh, you know. No, there you go. The best form of defense is often a, a swift offense, and a lot of times when people are doing the wrong thing, they go on the offense to try and turn the situation in their favor. I don't know how they can conceive that it's ever going to work, but well, little dogs bark loudest. Yeah, they do. Big dogs don't have to. No. That when our guy gets going, you know about it. Hmm. Yeah, I haven't had to belt anyone for a very long time. Yeah, I don't. Do last that. time, last time I did, uh, the entire school decided to leave me alone. Hmm. It ended my bullying problems. Yeah. I Sadly, I lost school. it, so it didn't end mine. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. <laughs> well, you know. What was really amusing was that I got coerced going back into the 10 year reunion. Apparently, they were uh, short on selling tickets or something like that. So I turned up and nobody knew me. I had literally I changed strive that, for that kind of. I strive for that kind of anonymity. Yeah. That's the only reason why I haven't changed my given name to John. <laughs> because it would stand out more than my current one. Yeah, right. I had to order some parts um, the other day for a device I use. Mm -hmm. um, and I gave, you know, the guy starts off, okay, what's your surname? Yeah. Smith. Yeah. What's your given name? Matthew. Not much help there, is it? No, I've got six on my books. Um, <laughs> what? What's your date of birth? Yeah. I'm in a public place. I'm, I, mate, I'm in a public place. Why don't you just read off some years and I'll tell you which one I am. Yeah. Okay, I've got one in 1983. Is that you? No. No. Uh, 1984? Yes. Okay, I've got two of those. Uh, which one are you? Phone number. So I gave him my last three digits. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not a conversation I've ever had to have. No. Same story at my uh, uh, Gundam kit supply store. Yeah. Uh, I've got a local one of those in walking distance, which is actually really good. Uh, although a little on the expensive side, stuff with a lot of stuff that yeah. I actually want. They've got four Matthew Smiths on their books, mm. so I always give them my phone number instead. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're that guy. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. I I would have have killed for a, a, a common name at. In, in school, because all I wanted to do was fit in, and you know, with an with my name and um, antisocial tendencies, antisocial tendencies, and and my you know mixed background and, and all that kind of stuff. There was no way I was ever going to fit in, and I was just different. I was different to everybody else. I was interested in other things. Um, it was. <sighs> We watched the Rodman special the other night. 
It actually took us two nights to watch it because it's a movie link sort of thing. And it was like so much of, you know, what he went through as a young guy. It was so relatable. And, and so many of his problems later in life stemming from all of that stuff that happened to him as a kid. And you just like, you can't, can't help but feel for the guy, you know. He, yeah, he derailed himself somewhat, but there were reasons. Mm. And, you know... But I, I hate to to cut in on you here, Dan, mm. but you've just hit 10 o'clock. I don't know if you've got uh, somewhere else to be. Nope. So you're going to keep going, but my game has been uh, scheduled uh, for an hour's time has been moved up to now, so I'm... Yeah. You're going to gonna bail. Drop out. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to finish up. Like, I'm just finishing this guy's hair. Yeah. So. Well, I told him I might be a couple of minutes late. I just wanted to give you the time warning. Yep. I, I didn't knew know I was tired on had, time. Uh, I didn't know if you had uh, further discussions with uh, certain other people that are online and names are in red. Nope. Uh, scheduled for now. No, not today. Because I'm behind. Unusual. Because I've been away for a couple of weeks and I haven't caught up yet. Fair enough. So, Hi, here. Ross. So here we are. Four oh, colors. A lot of blonde dark elves. And we'll do different things with their hair with different washes to give them different shades mm. of blonde. You can stick those on the table as they are. Possibly. No. <laughs> No, they definitely have to have secret sauce applied. Oh, well, I'm thanks, Manny. You know, you've got three colours on them, plus one, so... Yeah. <laughs> well, there's four on them now. Exactly, three colours plus one. Oh, you mean you have to have a minimum of three colours to put them on the table? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I don't know how that works for white scars or something. <laughs> All white, plus red trim. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You have to have three different shades of white, don't you know? <laughs> I'm just going to shake my head at that. Yes. I've really missed this, Dan. I'm glad you're back. I don't begrudge you your holiday at all, but I am But, but, glad but don't back. do it again? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> give, it, give us a couple of months in between holidays. Huh? You're right. I've got absolutely no leave left. I've consumed all of it. So I'll be using long service to go to the US in August. Oh, so. yeah. So, Good. Uh, I don't foresee a break before then, though. Um, enjoy the heck out of the rest of your weekend. Thank you, and the same to you. I might catch you later when I come looking for advice on lamps. Yeah, good stuff. Thanks, buddy. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Take care everyone. Of